Um, I see Prince Patrick, I wish I had this long before now. Um, we've seen schools and, and teachers who have used it with just a single, with their personal phone or with a personal computer. And at times in many cases, just create QR and um, allow students maybe share on, on their students' WhatsApp group and students, teachers, are, parents at home are able to use it. So my, 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 what we realize is there's almost always a way to use it. If it's not in class, it can be as a take home where they use the devices of their parents or of their guardians or their siblings, in and but, but there's always a way. And that's what like the first rule that the recommendation is, it might be intimidating at the beginning, oh, my, my classroom does not support this, but I would advise that you just allow for some minutes or like just take it all in first, explore and learn from how others are using it. And you'll find really ingenious and amazing ways people have try to overcome the adversity or challenges they face in their classroom to use this in their classroom. Again, the goal is not the technology, it's the power and the, 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 the transformation it brings into your classroom. So I would advise that you explore within the, within the unique constraints you have in your classroom. There's at least two ways, irrespective of your context that you would find to use this. I'm going to post the link again for those who missed it the first time. I see some people are asking. It's fet.colorado.edu, P-H-E-T. I just posted in the chat again, colorado.edu. Visit the website and try out. Um, there's going to be a guide or syllabus as well that you would receive. And Inanna in is going to share. You have, you have all of these links and every relevant link that we're going to be sharing or discussing here today. So I started with the design. And of course, having explored, some of the benefits is, as you might have figured out, is the interactive visualization. So it fosters visual and dynamic learning of scientific concepts. So for example, even if even in the most furnished schools, it's impossible um, that you take all of your learners out to space to see how the Earth or Earth orbit around the sun or how Earth moon orbit around, around the Earth. And but with, with such in, amazing tools, you are able to overcome such constraints, students are able to see as against telling them, which definitely leads, leads, leads to misconception based on, you can, you can explain in the most effective ways, but if the students do not have the right mental construct or they've not had the most, the, the best experiences, irrespective of what you see, all the learners will, will, will construct different images in their head. And with these tools, you can almost eliminate the chances for such for such misconceptions because they have the right visual aids that is that works scientifically actually um it's it, it, it yeah and and students can understand without such misconceptions and of course develop competence interest but also a deeper love and understanding of this thing so its benefit is around the interactive visualization cognition as well you'd notice that in many cases there is multiple representation things are said in different different ways and there's scaffolding as well. Some of the complex things are, are introduced at different stages. You can start at the very low barrier, getting started example for your learners. And they would always find, because it's very open-ended, there's always a challenge or question you can pose that they will continue to find it fun. And there's no cognitive load as well. They're not trying to put in everything and retain. They're actually in there, present and trying things out. So it's, it's, it's a powerful cognitive tool. Self-assessment as well, students can see real-time feedback with very little guidance. So there's, they don't have extensive text to see, to understand what they've read, as in the mistakes they've made. They can see either through audio or just um, so, some visualization, what might be wrong or some warning with what they are doing. And they can make necessary adjustments in real time. And that can be powerful and saving time as well. It also reinforces things as in repeatedly based on, alpha, based on the scaffold support multiple representations, like I said, pacing and self-directed learning. Students, irrespective of their pace, um, can go at their pace and everyone arrives at the learning goal at the end of the day. And again, like I started with students agency, they are guided because it's more guided inquiry. Um, it's open-ended, but it's, it's still aligned with the goals you want to achieve in your classroom. Um, you'd find that in some cases, what we've noticed as well, the students want to, students want to try wants to see the end or the limit of everything. So if you tell them, um, create a circuit diagram, they want to see how many bulbs can they pull out before, before they run out of bulbs. 
And in many such cases, you'll notice that we've, we've set stoppers where there's a limit to the bulb to address many of those, uh, perhaps not distractions, yeah, but some, some what, might be, what might be distracting to kids, but also allow enough bulbs, <laughs> enough, enough cables and resistors for them to explore without real. So there's, there's some guiding, there's some limits, but students feel like there's, it's, it's just completely open and they can continue to explore. Um, and, and all of this, the limits basically are sufficient to support almost all of the goals, um, the learning goals you might have in your classroom. So it's, the SIMS are specifically designed to support students in constructing a robust conceptual understanding of math and science topics through exploration. And that is it, like students develop a deep conceptual understanding. It's not just understanding by definition, but they understand the cause and effect. Oh, I really see this is the root effect. This is the consequence of this action. And this is the interplay of why this variable affect this variable and the consequence of those. And of course, through exploration, all of these things come alive. And there's extensive research around the effectiveness of these tools. Every month, we have this monthly webinar where we bring seasoned researchers on the continent um, who has done extensive work um, validating its effectiveness, even within the African context, um, within the African context. And it, this is one of this is this is from one of a member of the team as well back in 2006 that says there's a gr a greater percentage of students answer conceptual question correctly when a sim is used in demos or physical experiments. So on like <clears throat> concept question with clickers, it provides opportunity where students. This this is just to prove that the misconceptions or errors students have is limited even in the moment. And there's also evidence of increased learning because of course they, they understand the cause and effect and they can postulate, make hypotheses. It's okay for them to make those things as they make a wrong judgment in many cases, but they can try it out. And then within the environment, they make those, make, make those corrections and they are added down the right, that right path. Again, tons and tons of evidence around the effectiveness because of our time would we'll save that for future um, sessions where, we're, where we have more talks. And this is evidence of new classroom norms as well. Apart from the evidence of its effective use, you'd also see that it provides new opportunities and it helps you transform your classroom. So in a scene-based lessons, you'd, you'd like, like you're exploring new mathematical ideas. Um, th there's almost no limit. Uh, like students can have ask very open-ended questions, make discovery, and it's not very, very um, strict um, and, and narrowed down to standard procedures where students can do not have the opportunity to explore or learn in actual terms what they otherwise should. Students can also, so this, the, such a scene based lesson also supporting inventing strategies over recalling facts. Students can try new things out, um, like it's a safe environment. They can break things, they can destroy things. They can make discoveries, even things you did not plan or things you had not mentioned, you'd notice in many cases, there's some, what we call the open play, where you allow students some, maybe two, based on the total number of time you have, two minutes or five minutes to just try out the scene. That's powerful in a way, they begin to form their understanding or get comfortable around how the tool works or the different objects within the scene. But also one important factor is, We've noticed if you don't do that, students would are, are inquisitive. They will always want to try out, oh, what is this? So if you do not allow for such time, they, they often do that when you're explaining or you want them to focus on other things. So we advise that for the first two to five minutes, allow them just to explore, play with the sim, no question, just tell them explore. Tell me some, something similar to what we did. What did you find out? And you'd realize, oh, some of them would have actually begun to construct and understand many of the things you plan to teach in the classroom. Or some of them might find completely amazing, make amazing discoveries that are not in line and that you can then tie together. And that can bring in exciting conversation in your classroom. And students can share their own examples. They are, they are, this supports like complete pathways or roads down to the same learning objective. Students can say it's two plus five, and others can say it's four plus three. And it's not just about answering like the same questions all the time and um, get into the same answer. Everyone is going to get to the last, to the same learning goal at the end of the day, but they could have tried out different completely. They could have set up the circuit in a different way, understand what series is, understand what parallel connections are, and then they, this, they have this deep understanding that also appeals to their personal preferences or what they find fun or interesting in that time. 
And I spoke about this, I'll just pass over it. You can be used in pre-lab just before a, an actual laboratory session um, where you can tell them to try out and you then transfer. You can continue the exploration in, in an actual lab or in a lecture in a place where there are no, there are no resources in the school. You just have one single projector, a computer or a single phone. You can use it as a demonstration so they are teaching math and they can then see, of course, the graph plotted and it meant many such things. They just have that scaffold. They have those. What for me, what why this makes a big difference is before now, when you are taught, teachers, as much as they try to explain and provide help for you to make the right image or construct the right mental models, there's very little help students get in that process. We just expect and hope that they, they understand the way we've taught. And it, it's been a, such a gray area before now that, that has led to lots of error. With these two, beyond just explaining, you actually are helping students construct, you have like the aid to help students make the right mental construction or build the right understanding and model in their head. And it is such a powerful, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a lot of stress on both the teacher as well as as well as the learners, and they can make significant progress in little time. It's such such a powerful tool. So you can use it in class to demonstrate such abstract or difficult to understand concepts or activities where you tell them to actually carry out the lab activity, whether in class. And this was particularly useful in COVID, during COVID as well, where access to a physical laboratory was not possible. Students were able to connect and continue to learn in their homes where, of course, with, with, with the coverage, the restrictions and all that happened. And in, in distance learning as well, this can continue to support and um, make transform classrooms. Um, this is some of the things I mentioned earlier on, around this design. It's intuitive. There's very little text. So students are not trying to read and understand. It's about discovery. Try things out, move things, break things. When you understand and you see when I move this, this is what happens, even without telling them, and you start asking them questions. So what happens here? And you can then use that to then frame the, the direction that you that will lead the best path to the goal that you've set for your class. It's pedagogically powerful. It re supports multiple representation. And in many cases, you'd see that there are multiple pages. So the first one might be the very, the, the, the base knowledge that you should have before even introducing something difficult. So if it's within a scene, it, you can achieve all of that within a scene. But in many cases, if it's too, if, if it became, if, if, it, if, it, if, it, if there are too many objects within a scene, you can then, you, you might have to use, you can see multiple scenes support. Like for example, like I keep making electricity, you'll see a scene for um, alternating current and, and direct current and a lot of the other, other things around, <clears throat> around electricity generally that just focus on very narrow, powerful things and concepts, and you can then use them collaboratively or just in isolation as standalone tools to achieve your goal. Um, scene design, um, about 20 more minutes. I think I want to go into, so support multiple learning goals. It, it supports concepts, uh, just upon this again. Um, students can understand the concepts, models, representation, and relationship between the, the various science co um, concepts and the variables at play. But also the process around science, they can know how to explore the scientific process uh, where you take them through the, um, the five E's, but those who use five E's or um, the, the inquiry process where they go from discovery to collecting data to actually evaluating and assessing data and then coming to a conclusion. So it's it basically takes off it's all of that load from you and it, it provides the easy way to get that started. Students while doing all of this also develop soft skill and art skill that are relevant to support, to, to succeed in today's world where they can, of course, um, discuss around their discovery, collaborate with their peers, plan and then reflect at the end of the day. Reflections are also very powerful because it reinforces many of the things you've discovered, but also they can understand the lab techniques and quantitative problem solving where they can collect data and then of course, um, reach conclusions through that. And it's effective, it's enjoyable, understandable, and support student agency. Like I said, multiple scene in combination can lead down to different ways. And you can you can start with just um, a very based on intro to intro to motion and then move down to down that path based on the scaffold or the level of the, your learners or what you what you intend, what you want them to teach. 
Um, I will skip this for now. Um, we, I know we explored and found the theme already. <clears throat> if you made any discovery, this would be a good time to also post into the chat um, some of the things you figure out. And I, I'm not reading that now. Yeah, Zach, I, do you have the one you had now? I think you have right. Feel free to unmute and just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so, Shola, I've just been uh, also checking the chats and very uh, good questions in the chat. So, one of the questions perhaps that you could uh, just show is how can they access the FED simulation offline? Oh, great. Yeah, I, I can't believe I, meant, I, I missed that. I didn't mention that earlier. In just a minute, I'm going to add to the website now. Thanks for bringing that up, Zach. Um, So again, I'm sure just like I posted in the chat. <clears throat> so just a minute. So sorry. So I posted the link in the chat earlier on, and I'm just going to do that again for those who might join, might, have, might just be joining after that. <clears throat> That's the first website in the chat. Once you visit phed.colorado.edu, it takes you to this site. Where you find all of the information, you can explore scenes. The sim has been run over a billion times, and this is strictly online. And there's 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 an endless usage offline, which is almost impossible to track. And we provide teacher resources as well, where you can find activities that have been designed, and you don't have to design activities yourself. You can adapt and use them in your class, or create yours and then contribute in there. It's available in various languages. I'll, I'll show that again. I mean, like in, for example, in Nigeria, you find the simulations are also accessible in Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba, as well as English. So even learners who are not um, first speakers of language of, of English, they can also, of course, irrespective of the language they are most comfortable with, take advantage of this tool. So I'm going to start, since we've explored, I'm going to start by showing how to access it offline and then just walk us through. Um, how to find simulations for us as well. So for offline use, the tool, the sim, you can download and use it without the need of the internet. You just need to either download on a pen drive or a CD and install on your computers. And that's that's about it. Um, so first off, to find that, you can come to the end of the page. Once you scroll to the end, you'd find this menu option and beneath accessibility, you'd find offline access. So once I click on offline access, it's going to take me to a dedicated page that has all information about using this offline. You can, if you're using a Windows or a Mac PC or even mobile phones, we'll come to that in a bit, you'll find a tool that works for you. So if you're in Windows, you click on the Windows app, it downloads the entire laboratory of simulations for you, where once you install, <clears throat> you can use all of the sims without the need to connect back to the internet. The sim is accessible and available online always. But if there's no internet or we, your school is in, in a remote place where even, even in many cases where internet connection might be unreliable, our, our, our recommendation is actually to use it offline. So if internet is fluctuating, you, 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 you download when the students are not in the lab or when you're not using it, it's accessible and available. And once they are using it, whether there's internet or not, they can have the seamless balanced experience that does not impede their learning. So even where there's internet, we still advise use it, use it, use it in the offline mode. But if, if, if your internet is reliable, then if it's okay to use in the way that works best for you. And um, it, it's basically HTML5, so you can run it in, in, in your browser, just open, open directly. And that works. And you can also download the individual scenes. If you visit the scene page, which I'm going to show after this demo, you can download, like I mentioned earlier, if you click on the Windows app or a Mac OS app, you'll be downloading the 120, 160 HTML5 scenes that you can run easily on your computer. But if you just if you just need one particular one to teach your there's no need to download, like use all of the embers to download everything together. If you have internet connection, I and you're not stuck because you don't have that constraint. You can just download one when you need it and then use. It means you, 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 you don't you're not you don't need a fast speed internet to get that out. And for Android phones as well, you have it available on Google Play Store. 
and, and Chromebook and then the iOS. <coughs> so sorry. And there's a constraint with the mobile phone, uh, which, which I'll just um, add as well. And many of us might try to do that. The caveat with the phone is all of, the, all of these tools are free, but the, and the, the mobile phones are not because there's a cost with maintaining that. And to get it, to use the SIM on your phone, you can use it directly from the Edvest app with no cost. And you have to or add it to your school with, within your within within your uh, within your school account or community and use it in your classroom. Uh, and is going to speak extensively to that. Or if you if if you, uh, or, or I, I think that explains it. So I don't I don't confuse us. So best is just visit and um, download Edvest mobile app. Um, and that's a good place to get started. There are other pathways based on what works for you, but I, I think that's a good way to get started. And of course, Nina is, is going to help with advice. If, if once you conquer that and you have more, you want to understand more ways, we'll be happy to share and get you started on that way. So again, you can download on mobile, on Windows or, 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 or Mac OS based on your computer type or on mobile phones. And, and what I was explaining earlier does not apply. You can use directly from the Edvest app with no restriction whatsoever. So I'm going to show you how to find the sims quickly again, and maybe in another four minutes, I'll pause for questions, and then maybe I'll have Zach and um, Nina also add to this. And I know we've seen, there are a couple of things we'll share around the methods and all of those as well. I'll allow Zach to speak to that briefly. And then next steps after this. Another thing I should show you again is the simulation. Once you come to the website, I'll just go back to the home page. <clears throat> Remember the offline page, is at the end of the page, but at the start of the page, you come to the top right corner, you'd find simulations. You can click on all sims. While well, this is coming up. You can, you can find all of the simulations listed here um, for all the subjects. Um, you then have this option to your left where you can sort by physics, you can sort by chemistry, or even subtopics within these subject groups. Or you can then decide to find what seems are available for my grade level. I teach at university, high school, middle or elementary school. You can sort and then find what's, re what's relevant and supports your objective. Recall that I mentioned that a seam can support multiple objectives. So even if you don't find something that works, you can ask or just explore and try other themes and see if it's going to help teach the concepts that you intend to achieve. I'm going to speak skip com compatibility by now. HTML5 and HTML5 is like the standard technology that works seamlessly across all devices. So just focus on that. And all I've shown now is just focusing on that. The Flash and Java are significantly old technology that we are converting all the themes from that technology to HTML5, and that's still work in progress. Accessibility and inclusion, like I mentioned, there's alternative input for learners with special needs, um, voicing, pan, interactive highlight, interactive mobile description, just a, a lot of other things um, to support different learner needs has been built in. And then where I'm going to stop here is the locale, where you can find currently support close to 120 other languages you can find Sui, if you're in Ghana, you can find Yoruba and you can access all of the themes in this language as well. You can find Igbo. Um, let's see, there's the Igbo version. Yeah, there you go. And then there's the Aosa version as well. And apologies if I left your language out. I know, I know um, what's it called? It's across the continent. There's, there's um, Kenya, Rwanda, which is what I was trying to see. There's English, there's Arabic. So just feel free, find, you most likely will find your language on the list already. If a sim is not currently in your language and you'd love to use it in your language or you think someone will find it useful, please get in touch with us. Um, and we can work with you to make that available in that language. I'm going to take a pause here now. There's, there's such a lot to discover on this amazing journey. I've spoken about translation and all of it. But I'll talk about the next thing around using the scene for us is, is just the first step. <clears throat> it's an amazing tool, but how you use it is significantly more important. So there are methods and strategies that are proven very effective. How do you get how do you get the best out of students? So it's still not using 
the tool in a in a traditional way that does not maximize its its it many of its features and that is going to speak to that in a bit I, I mean, of course you can find teacher resources but we'll talk about this along the way and um the workshop as well so i'm going to hand it back to zach now and nina um and within the next maybe minutes they can then talk about um the next step first and um, for zach um, if, i'm sure he's going to speak now and then um nina is going to close by talking on next step zach over to you yeah uh, thank you so much uh uh shola um i'll i'll go back to the questions and try to address some of the questions that have been raised and uh uh maybe one other question that i will address is that um uh someone is asking uh what is stem in full so stem is uh, science technology engineering and math i think that has been answered by by Nena, and then uh, can we get the website again for FET? Uh, I think uh, Ade Tumise has dropped the link um, again back in the chat box. Um, must I use it as a school or for personal use? So FET, FET, the website that has been shared, you can access FET for free. You can access it as a learner. You can access it as a parent, you can access it as a teacher, um, and any person can access it and you can use it anywhere. You can use it at home, in the library, at school, wherever you find it um, easy um, using it. And then uh, uh, other questions um, that were like way up, uh, um let me just go go up a little bit um what is the advantage of using it online over offline a very good question so with the online version you have access to the fed simulation and beyond the fed simulation you also have access to lessons that have been developed by other educators across the world that can give you an inspiration on how to use that FET simulation in a classroom setup. Uh, there's also activity sheets that you can reuse or adapt and, and, and reuse them. Uh, there are also some suggestions of use of the simulation itself uh, when you use the online uh, version which is something that you will miss when you're using uh, the offline uh, version. Um, and then uh, let me see if there's another question up here that has not been answered. Uh, what are the options to access this FET? So one, we've said you can access it offline, you can access it online, and you can also access it via the app. Um, uh, so the, the offline one, and the online one are completely free, but via the app, you will have to pay like close to a dollar uh, to, to access it uh, via, the, via the app. But for me, I just usually access it, you know, offline, or I also access it via, um, um, you know, online. Um, let me see. Yeah, there was a good question that, uh, was asking about um, exactly how do you use FED simulation in a classroom setup, um, which is um, you know a good a good question and it brings me uh, it it brings me to what I wanted to to share about the FED professional development opportunity. Um, I don't know Nena if you can share your screen and share the syllabus. Um, uh, Shola, if you can allow Nena to share the, you know, her screen and share the syllabus that, um, um, that demonstrate the FET uh, professional development opportunities that uh, we do have. Um, Nena, are you able to share the screen? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm doing that now.
Awesome. So we, 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 we have professional development opportunities for teachers and this professional development opportunity is one, we do it through a course and what Nena is sharing on the screen right now is the syllabus of the professional development opportunity, which is a virtual workshop that is co-organized by Edves. And if you just uh, scroll scroll down, um, um, yeah, so if you just pause there for a little bit. Um, so because you, if you're interested in doing the virtual workshop that comes with a certificate, and then you really get into the details and the depth of how do you use the FED simulation in your physics class, chemistry class, math class, um, so you can do this course. Uh, there, the, the registration link is right there on that blue section. If you click on it, it takes you to the registration link. And all we ask is your full name, your first name, last name, and email address. And then we will use the, those details to invite you to the course, um, which you can then uh, uh, participate in. So what is the course about? So the course is about active learning, in FET with STEM interactive um, simulation specialization. It is a 45 hour professional development opportunity. It is hosted on Coursera and it is being offered um, with FET interactive simulation in conjunction with um, Edves. And you're going to learn about like accessing the simulations. You're going to learn about strategies that you can use to teach STEM subjects with the FET simulation. So who is this meant for? It is meant for anyone who is interested in the course. Um, and uh, it is basically granted to anyone who registers for the course. So if you're interested in the course, you register for the course. Now, although it is a paid course for this cohort, um, you know, you know, uh, teachers who are affiliated with Edves, we offer the course for free and you will of course get if you successfully complete the course you get a certificate um you know with the university of colorado and um you can use it um you know for for other things um so what will you do as a participant in this course i've mentioned that you'll have to commit to it uh the course is uh, 45 hours, so you are committing to a course that is 45 hours. It, it has both synchronous activities and asynchronous activities. So you learn about FET simulations, you learn about resources, pedagogies, and you will also use the FET simulation to implement your lessons and then reflect on it and submit activities. Um, again, we do also include include like uh, synchronous sessions where we come together and we discuss about how the course is going, challenges and how to address those challenges. Um, and the reason why it is important for you to participate in this course is because it is a lifetime opportunity to improve your pedagogical practice. You learn from one another, you learn from the community, you connect with all these teachers and you know, experts in STEM education. And of course, I've mentioned that you, if you successfully complete the course, you will receive a certificate for your efforts. Now, just talking about the syllabus, um, if you scroll down, uh, Nena, um, the course is divided into three big areas. So the first one is what we call introduction to FET simulations for STEM education. The second one is activity design with FET simulations for STEM education. And the last part is implementation of FET activities for STEM education. So that first part of the course, you learn about the FET sims, what makes them unique. You identify FET simulations that are relevant to the learning objective that you're going to teach in your next lesson or next week or next month. And then you are going to learn how to also like share these resources with other teachers. The second part, it gives you an opportunity to develop strategies for writing, uh, you know, worksheets and activities that are based on, uh, on the FET simulations. 
And then you are given an opportunity to also design a STEM-based lesson. It could be a math lesson, physics lesson, and also developed activity sheets. Then the third part, you're given an opportunity to implement the lesson in your own classroom and then do a reflection of your implementation to see you know, what went well and what needs to be improved so that you continue, um, you continue improving as uh, you continue working uh, through the course and using the resources. The requirement for getting a certification is that you must complete the course you must complete all the assignments and activities. And then once you do that, you will automatically get a certificate uh, once you have submitted all the required activities. In terms of the, the, the calendar, so the next phase of the course is being offered. Uh, if we get a quorum of at least a minimum of 50 teachers who are committed to the course, um, and and the course will will we will send an invite once you register, and then it will run up to end of September thirtieth. Uh, so that gives you you know like the 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 the, the calendar, and then of course uh, we will communicate dates when we have like you know webinars. Just address your issues and and things that you will um you'll be finding challenges in, and lastly. At the end of that syllabus, we have like frequently asked questions. And I would suggest that you read through the syllabus to go through those frequently asked questions. For example, what do I do if I need help? How do I submit an assignment? What if I don't receive peer reviews from others? How do I submit assignment on a mobile phone? And many other questions. So I suggest that, uh, uh, you go through the syllabus, you see, is it something that would be useful to you? And if you're interested, I suggest that you register for the course. And then once we have a minimum of 50 teachers, then we can open the course and offer you uh, the course. So I just want to pause there to see if there are questions or if Nena has got any other addition to add on um, about the course. Thank you so much, Zach. Um, I don't know if we can hear me. Can you hear me clearly? Can everyone hear me? Yes, we hear you good. All right. So um, I'm so excited about this partnership. We at Edves integrated with FET last year, and it's been an amazing journey so far. We have over 900 participants currently taking the course, you know, and then about 60 to 100 of them seriously taking the course on Coursera. And this platform is just to help you all to become better STEM teachers. Um, I think we lost Nina there. Um, of course, you know it's raining in Lagos at the moment. And um, I understand she's, she, she was trying to shed more light on the significance of the project and how important this is for Edverse. Um, Can you hear me of, now? Yes, welcome back, Nina. We hear you good. Please go ahead. All right, thank you. So I'll just, um, I'll just change my answer. So is it better now? Yes, yes, we hear you. Please proceed. Is it better now? Yes, yes, we hear you. Feel free to turn on the camera. Okay, off I just camera. changed my internet to see. Yeah, we know it's raining in Lagos. Okay, and that can okay let me just turn off my... Well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me just change and um, turn off my video. All right, so I was saying that we've been able to work with over 60 to 100 teachers who are currently taking the course on Coursera. And we have over 900 people who have registered for the course on Coursera through the Edvest platform. One of the things that we've benefited from our integration with FET, the FET team is that we're trying to build the capacity of STEM teachers. We received a lot of um, feedback during our last STEM competition as regards 
to what extent teachers are exposed to STEM and STEM education as, a, as an entirety. And we've discovered that a lot of teachers know how to teach biology, know how to teach chemistry, physics, and so many others. Hey, it's raining heavily in Lagos, so please bear with the breaks. It's, it's not intended, it's, it's as a result of the internet. So I can't emphasize enough the importance or how highly important Edbest is placing this, and they are going all out to actually make the trainings available for, um, for free to you. First things first is, my recommendation is, please wait to receive an email from Edbest or from Inena. If you go to the Coursera website and you attempt to access the course directly, they are going to ask to charge you. So that's not the route for you. If you want to pay, if you want to access it down that route, yes, please, as in, you're welcome to. But if you want to access, of course, the same, um, the same course, of course, at, at no cost and still have all the benefits, then wait to receive the email so there's no conflict. So you receive a, a unique link to join the cohort, which is more unique to you. You can join the cohort and you will get started from there. So again, do not join the course directly. Wait to receive an email after this event that points you in the right way. The, another thing is, in was sharing a document not long ago, which is more like the syllabus that breaks the different course components, what the expectations are. That's what Zach so, um, spoke about. The frequently asked questions and everything you need to know to successfully complete, but also supercharge and transform your STEM classroom. And this document will be shared. So two things you can expect after this is the syllabus for the course for many who continue, who I would like to continue on this journey and continue to and learn more about, of course, the simulation, but most importantly, the strategies that support its effective use. Uh, because like I said, it's possible to have a tool and then use it in non-effective ways. So both of them are work hand in hand. You have the tool at no cost that is powerful, and you then have the strategies and the understanding and knowledge to be able to effectively use it in your classroom. So that documents will be shared as well as the link, which will, it will include the link to the course. And once that is done, you'll be right on track. We'll be happy, of course, to provide all the necessary guidance and support for you on this journey. While we wait for Nina to come back, I think we'll just open the room. Apologies, as in because of the noise earlier on, we muted everyone. I'm going to unmute everyone now. Um, so I'm going to ask that you please keep your mic, mute, your mic muted unless you want to speak so that everyone is not distracted or there are no disruptions. I see Ebuka is raising his hand. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm, I'm going to allow Ibuka. Yeah, welcome back, Nena. Do you want to complete okay, what sorry. you're saying? Yes, let me let me quickly complete what I was saying. So I said that during the Edvest um, STEM competition that we had this year, we discovered that a lot of teachers are not really exposed to STEM education. And not STEM education is not just about your ability to teach biology, physics, chemistry in the classroom, it's about how do you translate the theoretical knowledge of science subject into practical right and many of our schools do not have enough facilities like you know a well-equipped laboratory again um, we lost the name out there so i'm going to um, open the floor up now and um, allow us unmute ourselves able the floor is yours please Feel free to unmute and then ask your question. Okay, good afternoon. I don't know if you can hear me. We hear you good, good afternoon. Okay, so my question is directed to Mr. Zach. Okay, um, I'm, I must say um, I've, been, I've, been, um, I've been privileged to um, take the course, you know, the free course. So uh, and it's, it's really, initial, it, yeah, initially I was like, it was like I was trying to do everything with, my work, but um, at the end of the day, I persevered, and I must say, the way the course is arranged and organized, there is no how you will bring out your mind and do this course, and then it will not impact you. So I encourage everyone. So um, my question is, 
since I started the course, okay, I've finished the first one, which is introduction to FETs. And, and, and please also, when we are doing it, like, I'm just saying from experience now, when we're doing it, there's a way it's arranged. You first do the introduction, then the um, activity design, then implementation. If you follow it that way, you would, you would, um, you would enjoy it more. So I did the activity design, then the implementation. So now I go back sometimes to check the ones I've reviewed. Um, and um, because um, from, the, from the way they arranged it, I checked the ones I've reviewed. I, I go back to check to see if um, I can review more so that I'm, I'll, I'll be done with that aspect. So, but my question now is the last one I did to Mr. Zach, which was the implementation. At the end, you see where they wrote evaluation. You know, it's, they have to evaluate what I've done so far in that aspect. So, but then when I click on the on the link, it doesn't respond. I've done it over and over and over again. It doesn't respond until the last time I went. I didn't fill the form. I just had to play, I just had to click on um, this um, you know this conclusion so that it just it just gets me settled that I'll be done with the course. So what I'm waiting for now is just um, to maybe get more reviews for people that have submitted or you know um, or um, the or the moderator of the course can you know coming because I don't really know when um, um, I will be I will be certified to have finished okay. everything even though I'm done with it. Thank eventually. you, thank you, thank you, Buka, for for your for sharing your experience. Um, Zach, are you are you there to respond to this question? Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Buka, again. Um, yeah, so the way the the course is designed is as Buka has mentioned that it is not just an individual doing the course that you also review one another because the biggest resource that we have as teachers is you know the human resource that we have within our our network so the idea is that we peer review one another and we peer review each other and in some cases you find that maybe a booker has made progress and has done the last part implementation um, uh, implementation of FET activities for STEM education, but the other teachers have not done that particular part. There are two options uh, for that. Either, like uh, FET can just go in and review a booker, but then it's only a booker alone learning from FET, or wait for other teachers to do the course, and then they can also see, oh, this is how a booker is implementing his lesson in his class. Uh, can I learn something from it? And then a booker will also review other teachers. So we tend to uh, you know, go for the, for, the, for the latter so that we encourage teachers to learn from one another because you, you are in the trenches and you understand much more what works within the Nigerian context and within those um, uh, uh, topics. So in the event that, uh, some teachers are taking very long, we can just go in and, and, and review for a booker's case. But I encourage that we all move together so that we can also review each other's, um, each other's um, work. So a book apologies, that has taken long uh, and is mainly because other teachers have not gotten to, you know, to, that, to that stage. Um, um, yeah, so that's what I would, what, what I would say. Thank you, thank you, Zach, for that. Yes, um, I also see Dean asking um, with a question. Please, if this is a good time, I, I, I think Ebuka's hands are still raised. I don't. Okay, he's he's yes, dropped he's it. Dro okay, he's yeah. dropped it. So, um, Beam Energy, please feel free to unmute and ask your question, and then I will come back to, to, for you to share your concluding thoughts. So I, I know you, you didn't finish um, the thoughts when you were speaking earlier, but we'll just take the question and then come back to you. Beam Energy, please okay. feel free to unmute, unmute and ask now. Okay. Good afternoon. Good it was very very interesting session though i kept telling you the void the audio was low i couldn't really hear what you were saying so i had to put on the caption but from the little i'm able to gather it was quite interesting now my question is this and i asked in the chat i wasn't answered must you be a science inclined teacher to do this first course because i'm really interested and one of the things why I'm interested in this, I'm one, I'm not really a science teacher, but I I am interested in the methodology with which teachers teach whatever they teach. I believe that with the right methodology, you can teach anything and students will communicate. So I'm asking, must I be a science 
inclined teacher to do that because I'm not. And then secondly, this um, first education, how far are you people planning to take it to? Because there are some areas that the schools are really suffering from lack of science teachers. And this would be very, very good, especially for the poor areas, the rural areas where they cannot really afford the basic science lab. So this would be a very good innovation if they can really get into it. So I guess I just asked two questions. If I have any other one, I will, but okay, it was great. very interesting. And I so really can I quickly to... answer the first question she raised? Yeah, sure. Please go for it. All right. So um, thank you so much, Bim. Um, I am actually an English teacher. Okay. I still teach, even though I work with, with an ed tech firm as a director, but okay. I started my career as an English teacher and a sociology tutor. So that's not even a science concept. But while Good. teaching, I discovered that I, I stumbled on technology. And I, in fact, I actually try, I was actually the one who tried to initiate the conversation between FET and EdVet from the very beginning, because as a teacher then in the primary school, I stumbled upon FET for the very first time. And I was like, wow, this is amazing, okay? And I actually used it to teach a creative writing topic. Good. I used um, um, a topic under um, where you have to talk about selection, gene selection, to teach about the family. And it led to a creative writing topic. So you can apply some of these things in the other things that you teach, right? In fact, my ability to assess students in the university currently has led me to realize that the writing skill is very important for all children to learn. So how about using some of these simulations and then teaching them how to express their ideas from the simulation in English or in another social science subject? And remember, FET has also added um, F science to some of their simulations. Ed science is basically an aspect of social science, like geography, and even an aspect of sociology, where you want to teach population studies, where you want to even teach economics, and you want to bring in a bit of mathematical calculation. You can use some elements of the simulations to expand the student's horizon. That's what we call cross-curricular link at that level, right? So I know that it's basically for STEM teachers, and we've made it so, however, as a social science teacher or even an art teacher, you can think of how you can leverage on some of the simulations in your own classroom and link what you're teaching in English language or link what you're teaching in an art subject to okay. science. So that answers okay. the first question. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank before you go, Nena, before you go, what, yes, what you said that struck me is actually what I am into right now. I'm trying okay. to see how I can bring technology down and make teachers around me understand the importance of technology. That is actually why I'm interested in this STEM okay. in the first place. Because I noticed that two of the students I'm taking, the boy is quite intelligent, but he's lazy. When it comes to reading, he doesn't. But I discovered that he's a STEM product. Any little okay. thing they teach him about um, circuit and the rest of them, it doesn't cost him anything. He does that. So that was wow. actually what led to my wanting to go deeper because I was just yeah. into digital aspects of um, technology, the graphics design, the video editing and all that. But I'm not looking beyond. In the next yeah. five years, what will happen to the students in my area, even if the teachers are not looking outward? And that was why I asked the second question. How okay. can you people bring this thing down, especially in communities where they can't really afford, I don't know why I'm using that word, the basic chemistry labs and the rest of them, because this would be like cheaper in the long run for them if it can be properly implemented. That's why yes. I asked that question. Yes, thank you very much, Beam. I'll allow Shola and Zach to answer the second question. But I just want to let you know that one of the reasons why we decided to partner, we at EdFest decided to partner with the FET team from the very beginning was because the FET team already has a plan to democratize technology for rural areas. And that is why they okay. have developed their scenes to be used offline. You don't need an internet. It can be preloaded 
and then used offline. So I'll allow Shala and um, Zach to give more insight into that. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yes, we're, we're, we are constantly working to increasingly, like I mentioned, within the past 12 to 18 months was when we translated the sims to make them available in Awusa English, Awusa Yoruba and Igbo, as well as many, like more than close to 20 African languages now. Um, and the, the, the motive behind that is to gain access to, even to those regions, apart, apart from the access, apart from the low, no cost, apart from the lit, limited technology opportunities, even language barriers, we're trying constantly trying to eliminate any barrier we think is standing in, in, in the way of learning, letting anybody, irrespective of their geography or socioeconomic class, have access to quality educational resources. Um, of course, even for teachers, which is why most of the courses in many cases are, are more free um, than ever compared to, to the counterparts. But we cannot do this alone. And I think a lot of it also goes back into, into the hands of teachers like yourself. You belong to teacher communities and groups. Um, just like we have here, many of us here already know, if we go ahead to tell at least one teacher that we know who needed the most in that community, then that can, that can have significant impact. Unfortunately, as a project, we cannot go into every community in every state, in every country, in every continent across the world. As in people would, people would have to do that. And we're doing all that we can with, with all the resources we have to continue to address those problems. And that final bit um, means you are also supporting and spreading the world. Like there's no cost. So tell those teachers you think would benefit the most, invite them to training such as this. Um, if it's offline, we can find ways. Just let us know how we can support um, okay. And we will constantly find ways. Just get in touch with Tina now. If, if it's a set of course like as in courses like this, or get them on. Even you can put them on USB sticks or CDs okay. and send to those communities that are completely isolated okay. and, and and they can have. That's what to I'm them. trying to do. I'm yeah. trying to see how I can draw the awareness because there's one thing to be interested. It's another thing for them to also know that they need this mindset. To yes, take things sure. beyond. Yes. Sure. So thank you. Thank that's you actually so much. what I wanted. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. I'll just I'll add a thing. Yeah, sure. Please do. I'll, I'll just add a thing. I think you've answered that in and answered your question. The only thing you need to persevere is you said you're trying to overcome um, science, but because, and I'm speaking as I'm saying this for all perhaps non science teachers on the call as well, because you don't have a science background, you, you might need mm -hmm. some bit more patience to go through the activities that you would find okay. in the course. So I'd, I'd advise that you take your time to go through no it, problem. but the methodologies are powerful and you can transfer that into any subject that you teach. Okay. Thank you so thank much, you Bime Maji. We'll go to Adamu now. I will, Adamu, thank you. Please feel free to unmute and then ask your question. Thank you for your patience. Hello, are you hearing me? Yes, we do hear you. Good. Uh, I really appreciate the effort of the first presenter. And I'm really impressed. My name is Ibrahim Adam uh, from Federal University of Uso, Tamfara State, uh, Department of Science Education, uh, specialized in mathematics education. And uh, uh, this PET uh, program really impressed me because uh, it touches my area of specialization, that is mathematics. And uh, I'm really interested in it seriously. And uh, uh, though I will register for it, of course, inshallah. Then uh, what I want to ask is uh, while you are uh, explaining on the on how to access the 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 program uh, offline, my network something was having problem, so yeah. I don't know if you can still uh, <laughs> please review it once for us so that we can have access to how we can access it offline uh, yes. before we register for the program fully and. Okay. Uh, uh, the second thing that I, 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 I it really uh, impressed me is uh, I can see a lot of uh, content of physics and uh, uh, chemistry also there in the in the platform, and uh, I don't know that of mathematics I can see only two or three. So I don't know whether you uh, you can also incorporate a lot of uh, mathematical concepts in so that uh, we will have a lot of things to explore in that area of mathematics too, and. Uh, I know STEM is uh, science, technology, mathematics, engineering, and mathematics. So that means uh, all what you are, you people are talking about are uh, all about these uh, areas. And though the that the person that just uh, asked question, I was uh, trying to bring the this thing to 
art and uh, social sciences uh, courses also. And I'm really impressed for that matter. Please, if you can review that uh, area of uh, offline access, and then also where to access that languages. You have also demonstrated something on that languages. And then my network was having problem also. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my Thank own you. part. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adamo. Because of our time, and I, I would say if you stay back after we've answered everyone's question, I would, we would have enough time to go through the demo. But I want us to take time to address everyone's question without wasting everyone's time. But what you can be sure is you would get an email from Inena after this that has all the relevant links, accessing it in many of the African languages, registering for the course, and um, where to get help and all of that, and the link to the course on Coursera that you should access the course through without going directly to the website. So just wait to get an email. You've not missed anything. Wait to receive an email from Inena and also how to get support, where the community to provide support would be. All of that will be sent to you via email. You can expect that, say, on month, maybe before the close of business on Monday, because it's the weekend already. So just, just okay. give, give us some time to go through or put all of those together for you, and we'll do that. And, and like I said, I'll explain the offline access to the, um, at the end of the meeting, if you stay back afterward. For mathematics, just remember, I started a while ago um, as, as a physics project, and because physics is also very... Um, kind of lend itself to that. There, there, there are more than four math simulations. There are lots of math simulations in there as well. So please look a little for that. But the project started with physics and had gone ahead with physics. And, and apart from it lending itself, that, that's where it started from. But increasingly, we're adding all of this, um, more, more, we're, we're adding things for all of the other subjects. Like I mentioned at inception, the numbers might vary. Don't feel, don't be distracted. You might be able to borrow from a different subject to support the learning objective. And if not, there are efforts to continue to develop things as, of course, more resources become available and as, as, as we see the need. But the priority for us is not to be able to do um, a simple week like, we've be, that, that, like most platforms are used to. We're more prioritizing concepts, um, a concept-focused approach where we under, identify a concept that is difficult or too abstract for students to learn, and we address based on priority and increasingly, once we once we are done with the most difficult ones, we continue to build out and address all of the other things. Hopefully, someday, sometime, somewhere in the future, would have had we'll, we'll have enough sim for all of the teachers across all the subject or disciplines that you'll be proud to have and use in your classrooms. Thank you again for Thank your you question, Adamo. Yeah, Thank you Prince pa much. Prince Patrick, over to you now. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Good. Good morning. Uh, it's a privilege to be part of this webinar, and I must say I've really enjoyed every session of it. Actually, I got to know about the FET program during the Audacious Adverse Catalyst uh, seminar, where I watched online. But at least this webinar gave me more insight into the FET use of the, the SIMS, how to use the SIMS, and also go around it. I'm a social science teacher, and I'm at least I am happy to see that earth science is part of the program because geography is what I teach. But where I am concerned is mostly now concerning the use of the FED SIM. Must one be an adverse uh, school to use the FED SIM? If no, how does one get to register to be an adverse school? And what are the process or procedures for becoming an adverse school so that one can have full access to the FETS simulation? Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Patrick. I, I think I'll let Nina speak to that. Nina, are you still with us? Okay, I'll take that. So um, the, first, uh, the first response is no. You do not have to be an adverse school to use the SIM. The SIM is available for all teachers, all learners at no cost, irrespective of their geography, their socioeconomic class, wherever they find themselves. You can visit the site directly. However, we've provide, we've partnered with Edverse to be able to provide guidance and 
of course, a lot of the other offerings that they have and bundled it to be able to perhaps add, attend, to your, attend to your needs. So while you can access it directly on the website and we invite you to, you would also be able to access it on Edverse website, but also the unique offerings that Edverse would be able to offer you, like the, the personalized training and guardians and this, and maybe all, all the other features on the website that they've made available. And to find out how to become an Edverse um, basic school, I would also advise that you wait. We can't do that with on this call, even though it's an important component that you should wait to receive an email and all of that information will be included. I hope that answers your question. Yes, I think that uh, answers my question. And also concerning, like you said, we can download it. Uh, you said something about the offline download. Now the offline download, We lost you there, Patrick. Download, like you said, on mobile, there is some coming. Like you don't need to have any of such cost implications. I don't know if I got you rightly on that. Can you, can you, we lost you for some seconds, Prince Patrick. Can you, can you repeat your question? Okay, what, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. All right. What I said was that you, concerning the download to have the offline in sync. Now you yes. said something about on mobile that there is some is it cost implications or it's I don't know I can't understand that. But now if it's cost, there is a cost implication on mobile. Is it the same as on PC or it's totally you just download and install on PC and you can run it for free? Okay. I need to get clarification on that. Great, great question. Thanks for asking for. So I'll come up to clarify. So the first thing is. What I started with, the themes have always been free, will continue to be free for both students and teachers and schools. Okay. Everyone have access to those for free. To okay. download to download and use offline on the PC, you go to the website like I demonstrated because of our time, I would not be able to do yes, that. Yes. If you, stay, if you stay back after this call, I'm happy to demo that again. I'll stay back and just take everyone through. But I want to answer everyone's question before I take back. So those who don't, who don't have time can leave and those who have time can stay back. So you can visit the website, download, which I'm going to demo after this, to ask, have, have it available on your, on your computer or all the computers in your school. There's no cost to that. On okay. the mobile, on the, you have two options on mobile phones. You can download the Edvest app and then have access to it. If you do not have an account, you can have access to the Sims. If you have, a, if you have an Edvest school and you have access to it, you can have it to your own community, or to your school, and of course, use it alongside all the benefits and features that Edverse offers. That's one way. So you can access it through the Edverse app, explore that, and see how, the, how it works. On the flip side, to access it via the FET app, there are two ways. You can download the mobile app for FET and install on your phone. But that comes at the cost and it charges the minimum you can pay for on the app store. So in USD, it is 0.99 as in 99 cents. That's the least you can charge. And in Naira, okay. maybe it's around 300 or 400 Naira. So okay. have it on your phone. Um, sorry, um, Aki, I think you started sharing your screen. Um, sorry, Zach, if you can help. Okay, thank you. I know that was an error. Um, so like I said, and that's one dollar, that's one, that 99 cent, that 300 naira again is a cost, but that just helps with maintaining the app. Okay. okay. Yeah, so that's, but, but that's why it charges like the minimum it can just to keep, to maintain the app and keep that running. But the SIM itself is free. It's the, it's the app that contains all of that so that even if you're not connected to the internet, you can continue to use it. Also, on your mobile phone, without installing the app, you can use your browser and go to the website and then save it on your phone. And you can have access to all of it as well, even though the experience might be slightly different. So you can access it on your phone. It might require some bit of more internet, but without installing the app, you can use the simulations for free at no cost. But you, if you want a mobile app, that just makes it seamless, whether internet is amazing or it's raining and it's affecting whatever thing, you know, like you can you, you know what to expect. It's yes, a continue yes. to deliver, and that's just a slight difference in there. 
So just to be clear, three ways, um, explore through the fair, through the adverse half, especially if you have, a, if, you, if you have, if you are an adverse school already and see how you can integrate that into the infrastructure or learning ecosystem that you already use through okay. adverse. And um, you can also go, you can also download the app. And of course, once you download the app on the landing page, you'll see the link to FET on the home page. And for the mobile app, you can download the FET app. It comes at the cost, the minimum you can pay for an app on the App Store or the Play Store. In US, it's 99 cents. In Naira, you can check it out. It's about maybe 400. I, I, because the rate keeps fluctuating, I, I can't tell yeah, yeah, I know. What, what the current is, but it's the minimum you would ever pay. And that is possible to charge for that. But if you choose not to pay, you can access it from just open, visit the website on your mobile phone through the browser and download um, the, the app in many cases or just save. And even if you're not connected and you once you load the page, you can still interact with it. But again, if you if you refresh the page and you lose it, that, that page is that page is gone and you might not have that same experience again. If you have the app, whether you close it or not, you can come back to it at every point in time and you, you, you know what to expect. Okay, thanks a lot, Prince Patrick, for your question. Thank, we have, we thank have you very more, much. We have three more questions. Thanks every, every, as in so much for everyone for your patience and time. I, I hope I hope taking time to answer your question is beneficial to all. It's not in our practice to waste anybody's time. And we cherish um, you spending your Saturday with us. Uh, with, this is very important and dear to us. And of course, we owe every teacher in, in, in very high esteem. Um, Rufai Ola, thank you. Please, Please, your turn. Please, on you. Please share um, us the Coursera link. Yes, you get that by email. Coursera link. Yes, thank you, Kendi. You get that by email tomorrow on Monday. Good um, afternoon. Oh, but, okay, thank you. No, thank no. You. I, yes, Rufai, please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much, Charlie. Enjoy the webinar. But Mr. Francis have asked my question, but I just want okay. to add this. <clears throat> Um, I think early this year or late last year, I attended the seminar of this, in fact, with FED too. Ever since then, I didn't get any link, I didn't get any information. I even wrote several to get information from your hand. No response. Now, I want to, I want to assure me now that you say you are going to send the link by maybe by the end of Monday or so. So how, how sure am I I'm going to get the petition link or something? That's what I'm going to ask. Okay, thank you so much. First of all, I would like to apologize um, if if we if we connected at any point and you did not hear from us. I I can almost with certainty say, I can almost with a certainty say that we sent emails out. Um, there's there's almost no way that we would have engaged and we would just leave you stranded or midway. What might have happened is um technology. The email was either wrongly imputed or wrongly typed. And it was sent and it's never got to you. Apologies if you, if you sent anything back and you didn't hear from us. Um, you got an email to get to this call. So please, if that I think that's the first place to get started from. Please, there should be no breakages. If you did not hear back, it is because something failed. It is not because we did not make an attempt to reach out to you. Like I said, we owed our relationship with you. That's our promise to you. I think we are here to support and transform STEM, STEM teaching and learning on the continent. So it is not in our practice that would, would leave anyone hanging, not at any point. Like, I don't think it has ever happened. And if it does, it's because it was out of our control. So I would apologize again first, but then um, for our promise to get back to you on Monday, you can expect to hear back. If you do not get it, please do not hold back. Find, get, as in reach out, but I would be on the lookout. I, Elena is leading the conversation. Uh, maybe I'll, yeah. Elena, if you're if you're on the call, I think this is a good time to also speak about when and how um, you, you prefer to to reach out and engage. Yes, thank you so much. I've been listening to all the conversations. I didn't want to um, interrupt. Yes. Um, that's why I kept mute. That I would I would wait till you're done. So um, I've been getting a lot of questions on the chat, and I've been responding as well for those who are saying how they can they access. FET. Um, we've been saying it that you can either go through FET directly or if you're an adverse school, school, what we've done is that we've partnered with FET for free. And I want to say a very big thank you to the FET team because we've been on this for a whole year and it's been an amazing journey with them. So 
it's for free. You don't need to pay anything if you're on if you're already an adverse school. All you just have to do is to go to the resource page on the website or you go to you download the adverse app and then you can access any simulation of your choice for free. Now, if your school is not called the beauty, <laughs> the beauty about using um the fed sim on adverse is that you can we've been able to integrate it in such a way that you can actually merge it with your cbt if you're writing cbt examinations you can also merge it with your assessments your assessment portal or you can merge it with your homework or any other thing you want to do on the adverse portal right however if your school is not on adverse you can go directly on the fed page and then access any simulation you want to access for free or download the app and then you pay a certain amount of money. But before you're able to do all these things, we've also been able to integrate with the FET team to host you all on a free course on Coursera. It's totally free. If you do not come in through the adverse um, um, pathway, you will not be able to access that course for free. But because all of us are here and you came in through the adverse pathway, we will be giving you the link for free after this meeting. Now, if you have questions or you want us to discuss, before we started this, we had the first cohort and we had about four synchronous webinars with the cohorts where we were meeting from time to time to discuss challenges and discuss how we can, how we can make it work. The challenge now is that we would like you all to take, first of all, start the course. And then from the feedback, we can always call for a synchronous webinar like this. I'm, I'm grateful and I'm blessed to have people like Shola and Zach and Rebecca who are always ready to work with us and always ready to have meetings with us, periodic meetings with us. So we will announce that time when the time comes. But the major thing that we want you all to do right now, because you need to get trained and need to get certified and need to understand the deep ways. We can't answer all questions here really until you start taking the training to understand how to deeply use the simulations to improve your classroom. So I, I hope that answers your question. When we get to that point where we need another synchronous webinar, we'll definitely announce it and then we'll get people to join because we already have your contact details and your email addresses. But after this meeting, we'll send you the link to join the Coursera course and we'll also send you other details about Edvest and about FET and every other thing you need, the course outline, the syllabus and every other thing you need to make your learning journey so seamless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Janina. I hope that answers your question. Or maybe just a caveat, something that so that they know when to act as well. When, when do you want them to expect the email? Like close of business by Monday, they should have received it or is it yes, like Tuesday? Yes, yes. Immediately, yes, yes. Immediately after this meeting ends, we will get all, we already have your contact, we already have your details on um, the registration link that we sent across. So all we just do is to send you a follow-up email. I'm sure Ebuka is here. It's the same thing we did with the last cohorts. Ebuka was one of the um, cohort members who took the course seriously. So we'll just follow up with emails, at least by close of business Monday, or even today, you get it today. And then if you, if you don't get it today, please check back close of business Monday morning. And you can also reach us at any time that you want us to respond to. Maybe you're not able to access the course or you don't want, or you can't see um, the link in your email, okay? You can just reach out to me on nenna.edv.okore.adverse.net. No, I'm putting it in the chat box in, in, right in now. Yeah, great. Yes, for everyone to see. So if you wait for us till Monday and you can't still access or you don't have the link in your email, please reach out to me and then we'll would respond to you promptly. Thank you very much. Shana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nina. Um, so if you can pick up Nina's email um, from the chat, I'm going to bring it up on screen in a bit, but we can copy that on the chat so that you can you can also find a way to um, link back and of course get support. No one should drop off or should feel isolated at any point. If if it happens, then it is it is not from us. It's either technology or like something just failed somewhere in between. And we need to we need to, we need to leave you stranded or see that happen at any point in time. We have two more questions. Um, I think we'd have to stop at that point. But again, if you then if you want to stay back and have questions after the last the next two questions, we'll be happy to stay back and answer and just but then everyone else who has to do some other things um can then feel free to exit from that point on. Um thank you, Abatola, for your patience. The floor is yours now. Um...
I think Olakweju is speaking now, um, but we can't, we, your voice is crumbled. Hello, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, I we hear you good now. I want to appreciate her at first for organizing such a robust seminar as this. Uh, I, I just want to know, because I'm interested, I've been following since we started though I, uh, in the car driving, but at least I, with all I had this morning stroke after. Now I want to know this first thing, and I have a school and it's an early year school. It's not a secondary school yet. It's just a nursery and primary school. Can it be effective? Because I would love to join the training. And also some of my teachers too, I believe are on this platform. And we are interested if this first thing can be used for even the primary school, the nursery, are they going to also benefit from me? Because all I've been hearing is all about sciences and all that. And I, I think that one is for secondary school. But we that we have nursery and primary can, what can we gain? And how can we use this FET to really uh, put in our teaching in classrooms? Thank you. Thank you so much. Because, because it's early childhood, I'm going to break the rule and just take us back to the FED website. I think conversations are about FED are best experienced than, than explained because we also want you to we want to we want to preach. We want to we want to do what we preach. And because as much as time is a constraint, and because it's early childhood, I'm just going to show some, I'm going to add back to the website. I think you are muted, Shola. Apologies. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll go over that quickly again. I said I'm making an exception because this is an early child request. I'm going to break all rules and attend to that. Um, first is best is best is best experienced by showing showing as against explaining it. So I'm going to I, that's why I'm going back to the website to show how it works. And we also want to walk the walk. We don't want to see showed students and then we're not doing the same but time is always a constraint and we we are always co conscious of that so i'll show gravity and orbit and what i was explaining here is i went to the fet website and i went to look for all elementary school simulations and they are listed here and i was clarifying before going to show other things that because I chose elementary school does not mean a sim at university, high school or middle school can still not support some of the objectives you have in your elementary school. What it means is any sim in elementary school might be very basic and might not be, in many cases it's still relevant, but might not be super relevant for higher learners. But all of the sims are applicable. And I was using like gravity and orbit for an example, where you have a class and you want, you're talking about the sun or the earth and you want the students to see how the earth moves around the sun, I can show the path. How the earth moves around the sun, I can make this fast and then see, oh, how many days? Why do we have a year? What, what, does, what does 365 days mean? And I just know it's 365 on this can then show, oh, it's actually the number of days in which the earth orbits around the sun. But as against your stock, as you're talking about it, this is a powerful illustration in terms of how it works and students irrespective of their level can do that. If this is the only thing you use in this scene for that level, it meets your objective 
it is solved, the students understand it at a deeper level, perfect. For students at the higher level, you can then say, oh, there's some gravitational balance. Maybe I'm not in secondary school or even university now. What happens if, okay, so what, what, is, this, what is the moon? What does the, how does the Earth move, move the, the, the Earth's moon moves around the Earth and in the orbit as well? And this, this can just begin to show that you can have a, a satellite around the Earth. And in terms of, of course, the GPRs, the global uh, positioning system and all of those. And this is, these are just quick ways. And in just showing this in the classroom, students understand that single conversation you're having in your classroom. This is a, this is an astronomy or earth science concept, but it can teach something in social sciences or social studies or whatever that is, or just an informal conversation with your child at home. So the rules is more what you set or the boundaries you set for yourself. As Amazing. Teachers. For yourself as teachers. For us, it's more, we understand those barriers and concepts and what is important. And we try to emphasize that. So this is one, this also teaches almost the same thing. I can then show, this, um, sorry, I'm going to mute this now. Where is my sound? I'm going to just show. This is almost the same thing, but you can see this is deeper. It's not as big. The Earth is not very visible, but this is still the velocity in terms of how the Earth moves, how the sun is not actually static, and the sun is moving in its own orbit as well. And I can then change the, oh, what's the gravitational balance between both of them? I can increase the size of the Earth and see how much destruction that causes. and because they are young kids, they don't need to know what, what they, 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 they don't care about what gravity is. But I can use this thing that is sophisticated to just teach a single concept. And I can then increasingly scaffold and go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper to what extent and as far as I, as, as I can in the classroom. And students who begin to just explore this at a very young age means even beyond the boundaries that um, our classification system sets for them, they can begin to understand deeper and have conversations around gravity, around the Earth's mass, even, even when they've not been taught in schools. So again, it's more the limits we set um, that is possible. I've taken time again because it's special, um, is, it's, it's early childhood. The question I was going to do is then show us two early childhood scene. This is make it 10 and I'll, I'll do number play as well. There are just too many scenes to two and this is balancing act. If we go on with exploration, we will, we will not leave here today. Um, there's number play. There's number. Yeah, I, I, I well. think I think because of time, Shola. Um, mm -hmm. if she now she can see that um, it's something that is useful for all age groups from nursery yes. to primary. So I'll yes. suggest she goes in and takes a course uh, so that she can sure, have yeah, a sure. deeper understanding about how it works. I know some okay. people's hands are still raised, like Obatola, Kafilat, and Sam yes. Oladunji. Okay, great. Thanks, thanks, yeah. Nina. So let's take the last question, actually, and we'll just we'll close the meeting there and we'll stay back for anyone who is happy to stay back. All right. Um, Obatola, Kafilat, Thank you so and, much, yeah. the floor is yours. Obatola, are you still with us? Kafilat. Um, we might have lost you. I remember calling you earlier. Sam, would you like to go in our place and we will draw the curtain after your question. Sam Olagudu, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Um, so the host, I'm sorry, please can you hear me? Yes, we hear you good, please go ahead. All right, all right, thank you. I, these questions I'm about to ask might have been answered, of course, in the course of the uh, webinar. But then I make this with network abnormalities. I may not have uh, followed while you were answering those uh, questions, which I'm about to ask right now. Uh, just two questions, basically. Foremost, what is the name of the simulation on, on stock? Then, secondly, is the course error link available to offer as part of the webinar, or is just um, individual based on request? Thank you. Yes, um, everyone who, who registered for the for Coursera will get an invitation, will get the link to join the course. You can expect to get that on Monday. And sorry, can you go over your first question again? Yes, uh, um, my first question is, what is the name of the simulation app on stock? So it's fair, it's just set for PH. Yes, P just set for PH. All right. All right, all right, thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay. Um, thank you so much for your time. It's it's been amazing spending the again Saturday with you. I'll hand it over to Inena now as we as as we start a wrap up. Thank you so much, Shala. We remain grateful at Edvest for all that Fed, the Fed team has been doing. And um, it's been an amazing journey working with you all. And thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, um, Zach. Thank you for joining us. Rebecca is in America and the time zone is not even conducive for her. And yet she joined us today. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, now, the next step is for you to take the course on Coursera understand what FET is all about, be a part of the movement, practice it in your classrooms and let students start learning. And then if you're not on Edvest, reach out to us. You can send your email address. Some people have been dropping their email addresses and phone numbers and contact details with us so that we can lead you on this journey, help you to automate more processes in your school and also help you to leverage on the free access that FET has given us as an organization in your schools, no matter where your school is located, whether it's in the city or in the rural area, we're here to help you, give you the basic form of technology that can help you enhance learning in your classroom. Like Shola said, you don't need a very sophisticated form of technology to use FET. As simple as your phone, as simple as, you know, just one computer in the classroom can help students explore this simulation. You can also send it, send the offline versions to them via WhatsApp, Telegram, or any other thing that you want to use to, you know, transfer the knowledge to them at that point. And they will get it there and they will be able to use it on any device that they have. And then I know of some teachers in some rural areas that have been able to use FET to assess their students. So what they do is to um, show them in the classroom and then give them some, some assessment or some form of homework or exercise to go home and practice on their own after they have watched the FET simulation in the classroom. So there's a lot of blended learning and synchronous learning that you can do using FET simulations in your classroom and outside your classroom, as the case may be. We'll be here to guide you the way. I've dropped my email address. If you need any help or you need us to guide you on how you can come on, on board, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be here to answer you. And when it's time for the next synchronous webinar, just take note that we'll be sending you emails and notifications for you to join so that if you have more questions while taking the course on Coursera, you can bring it here and then we'll respond to your questions. Thank you very much, everyone. Do have a lovely, lovely and fantastic weekend. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye. We'll be sending the recording as well after this meeting to your emails. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.